my wonderful people, uh, you're welcome to Africa Development uh, Network. And uh, let me let me let you know that uh, it has been wonderful. Uh, uh, the last uh, one or two videos uh, that have been done in this regard, it has been so wonderful. And this is why you need to look at uh, uh, the like button that is there and the share button also. And you like the video and also share the video to your friends because it, guess what? It, we are having a wonderful time already and uh, there's a whole lot of revolution that is being stirred up already in the past videos. If you actually missed the, the, the last videos in this series, please make sure you connect. You know, I, the last time I did on the role of uh, religious institutions in the development of Africa and I made a lot of uh, emphasis, a foundational kind of, not a lot, a foundational kind of uh, emphasis on uh, the role of the church in the development of uh, Africa and a lot of people have actually gotten their responses in this regard and you need to also get yourself involved because I know that the church has a whole lot of role to play when it has to do with the development of Africa and a lot of people definitely will criticize what I'm saying but uh, 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 well I will accept the criticism and then move forward but I don't want to just assume I don't want to impute of myself as a prophet I'm a young man but that have a vision there's a vision in my heart there's a passion in my heart to see that the church becomes a catalyst for national transformation and the last video I made a lot of emphasis uh, in establishing the fact that the church has actually done a lot of work when it has to do with the spiritual development of people and I believe that this COVID-19 a lot of things have been formatted and there's a need for the reinstallation of the new software and this new software is like uh, is like uh, installing the software of the development the development the development of the continent of Africa and should the case if you doubt what I'm saying why is China interested in Africa why is America interested in Africa why is uh, United Kingdom and other first world countries in quotes why are they all interested in Africa that is a pointer to the fact that it's time for Africans to wake up and begin to rediscover themselves and it's time for us to wake up and when I talk about we I'm talking about uh, you and I so you don't need to point any accusing finger or any uh, person in government we can begin to make our own contributions uh, in this regard because i believe that it's time for africa to make advancement for more than 55 years uh, several nations of africa uh, uh, have actually gotten their independence it looks as if that uh, there's a kind of an economic recolonization that even though we have received independence but yet we still depend on the China. I'll take us some time and talk about about 11 nations that are indebted to China as we speak, especially Nigeria. And that's why almost everything that we use in is China. But I believe that in this season, as we begin to engage the system, the church system, I listed a whole lot of churches, uh, the Anglican church, the Catholic church, and uh, the Pentecostal church, especially the mainline Pentecostal churches like Redeem, like uh, Dunamis, uh, like Assemblies of God, like uh, Winner's Chapel, pastored by God's servant, Dr. David Oyeripo. These are Mountain of Fire, Olukoya, and the Salvation Ministries, and several of them, which uh, time will not permit me to mention now, that have actually made a whole lot of impact. They have built systems that are running the Ukrainian University. Could you imagine the Covenant University is ranked one of the best uh, in Africa and all over the world, just within a space of time. So why can't we reproduce that in our educational sector? This is the main focus of uh, the African Development Network. And African Development Network is being uh, sponsored and powered, if you can use that word, by uh, iGold Africa. iGold Africa means Initiative for Good Governance, leadership and economic development and also a uh, faith house a uh, transformation assembly uh, that i pastor i yours truly uh, and for those of you who have not actually come across our video uh, my name is uh, barisikena Emmanuel. i'm the team leader or international president of the i gold africa and the senior pastor of faith house transformation assembly and the president of uh, leeds uh, faith house business and finance company limited and we're involved in human capital development we're also involved in transformation of nation so every one of you that have the same body that have the same passion because i know there are 
a lot of people, 700, 7,000, 7 million people who have not actually bowed down, who have this passion, who have this desire. The essence of this network, why I'm doing this video is so that we can actually network together to see that our continent, Africa, experiences unusual transformation. Okay, let me just go into the broadcast today. And last, in the last video, you need, which you need to get, please, you need to get that video. You, if you miss that video, you miss something. And you can also check it on our website, www.ihavefromgoldafrica or www.faithhousengy.org. You can actually get the past videos and then watch it and then share it to your friends and let the revolution start. It's not about me. It's about the continent of Africa. And the last edition of the broadcast, I, I mentioned that in this, in this edition, I'm going to be highlighting some areas that the church, the, the, the Christ Embassy, pastored by Pastor Chris Oyakilomi, the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the, 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 the Catholic Church, administered by the Archbishop of the Catholic Diocese in Nigeria, the Archbishop of the Anglican Church, the Prelate of the Celestial Church, the, the Cherubim and Seraphim, and as long as you are under the umbrella of uh, Christianity, uh, there are eight points I'm going to be mentioning as time will permit me so that we can actually get going immediately. Number one is I, I need you to get your pen anywhere you are because I'm going to be listing them. I have to write them, write them down so that I will not miss out the points accurately. So you can pick up your pen and begin to write. So whether you are a pastor, whether you are a businessman, whether you are a trader, we we'll try as much as possible not to make this broadcast to become another religious, uh, something that will put goose pimples around you. No, not at all. Our, our commitment is to see that we get out of the four walls of our church system and begin to engage our society. What we experienced in this COVID-19, the church actually was part of the major bulk of the disadvantaged system that is the reason why we need to wake up at this particular point. Number one uh, 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 role of the church or how the church can actually become the, 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 the catalyst for national development when it has to do with Africa or when it has to do with Nigeria. Remember also that I'm going to be talking about how Muslims can be part of that. Yes, of course. I, I, want to, I will talk about that and different religions. So for now, I am focusing on this series on the church because they will have close about 80 million Christians in Nigeria and that's the same way we are scattered all over the continent uh, of uh, Africa. Number one, is that the church must uh, get into policy making. Number one is the church must get into policy making. The church needs to begin to mentor people, to begin to get into different systems of uh, society. The third one is that the church needs to intentionally begin to market her values, proactively market uh, her, her values and professionally, proactively market her, her values, uh, uh, proactively market her values professionally. Yes, the church needs to uh, proactively, when I talk about being proactive, not a kind of uh, immediately emergency response that we receive all over. I think uh, number four, the church needs to create uh, human development systems. We need to begin to create human development systems. Not, job, uh, not just a kind of a uh, job centers, but uh, human reconstruction systems are going to take time to explain that. And then the church also needs to uh, uh, overhaul, overhaul uh, 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 the, the concept of belief system, a kind of belief system that we are just there, we are not part of the world, we are going to heaven, uh, we don't want to know what is happening. Uh, let me tell you something, I believe in heaven, I'm a child of God, I was born again in assemblies of God, that was where I was born. I believe in heaven, don't ever mistake me, I'm still a pastor, don't ever mistake me. But I want you to know that the, the Bible says that we should occupy, Jesus Christ himself said we should occupy uh, while we wait for he comes. Occupy till I come. We need to occupy till he comes. And I want to start by talking about the issue of uh, getting into policy making. When we, when we talk about the issue of uh, policy making, I am talking about the church creating an environment where our voice, where our our contributions will be recognized by governments. In fact, we, we need to begin to mentor people. Last year, uh, 2019, around for the post of the uh, governor of my state, Imo State, Nigeria. And a whole lot of uh, 
believers, they were thinking that I have actually lost my calling. And you know what? I am in my calling. That is my calling. I should be bothered about what goes on when it has to do with the budget, the, 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 the finances, the income of Nigeria, the income of my continent. The income of your country should worry you if you're a church person, if you're a pastor. Could you imagine that just one statement by our president? All the churches shut down. Just one statement by our governor. All the churches in the state shut down. With all the anointing we have, with all the power, with all the healing anointing we have, don't you know now that at this particular point in time that it looks as if, quote and unquote, that the president is more powerful than a general overseer? Don't you just realize that the governor is more powerful? Don't you just realize that those young men that are, okay, I'm calling them young men or old men, okay? If you call yourself a young man, you call yourself an old man, it's your, it's your, it's your own. All those old and young men or middle-aged men that are all at uh, the red chambers and the green chambers that are making laws that are influencing uh, whatever happens in the economic sector, whatever happens in the educational sector, whatever happens in the media sector, whatever happens in the entertainment sector, whatever happens in the religious sector. These people who you call sinners, quote and unquote, they are involved in policy making. When it has to do with the enforcement of uh, uh, churches, to make sure that churches pay tax, the creation of a TIN number where you want to open an account, they will ask you to get your TIN number, they ask you to go and register, even though churches are registered as a not-for-profit organization. Someone sat at one place and made an economic policy that is influencing the decisions and the way you carry out your activities as a not-for-profit organization. We need to come to the point where we begin to engage ourselves in agriculture. You find that a whole lot of uh, uh, persons from the church system, I'm not trying to be derogatory at this particular point in time, have actually gone into the system of poverty. But you, you know the church can actually get involved in poverty. We, we need to get, we need to pull out a lot of resources that we have and, 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 and establish a farm and establish agriculture, mechanized agriculture. It's going to be heavy where our church members can come in and farm, we produce food, and then we'll find a place where we can export it. The church can and actually get themselves involved in exportation. When it has to do with a not-for-profit organization, that doesn't mean that you're not going to make a profit. It means that you are not profit-centered. But it means also that you can actually make a profit for the purposes of running the system. Instead of us depending on tithe, instead of us depending on offerings and all the rest of them, even though it's a biblical principle to make sure that, that there's money in the system, we can actually reinvent that and get people in the system. People will begin to get into agriculture. People need to begin to get into ICT software development. And we're doing that a little bit in, in our system. And I believe that is something that the churches can actually adopt. We be, we, we, the churches need to come to a point where we begin to give attention when it has to do with the health sector. We need to start getting involved in manufacturing of, uh, uh, of medicine. God is not against uh, medicine, what we call drugs here. Yeah. We need to begin to produce paracetamol and all those uh, 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 routine drugs that have actually helped ameliorate sicknesses everywhere. Look at the COVID-19. How many churches have isolation centers? How many churches have research centers, health development of research centers? We need to churn out our experts. We need to bring them out from wherever they are. I've talked about the issue of agriculture, the policy making. I've also talked about the issue of uh, the health sector. These are three cardinal areas. The movement of food has actually affected a lot of systems. If you discover that this is a wisdom uh, platform that we can look into, when the government was actually shutting down the system, they, they called the health sector, the food sector, and the ICT sector, they called them essential uh, persons on essential duties. Why the COVID-19 was these people were moving up and down and there was exchange of goods, uh, food items, and all the rest of them. The church needs to get involved in such areas. We need to get ourselves put together. We need to get our resources. Listen to me. This is not another opportunity for you to just sit down on your own on your own platform and gather things to, and gather everything around you. We need to navigate. We need to synergize with intelligent people and begin to do this for our people. Look at the issue of online applications. Almost all the payments are online. I there are a lot of intelligent people found in the church. We need to come and bring these young men together, create platforms, create an environment where they can begin to 
produce uh, softwares, produce applications that can be involved in online transactions and banking systems. And with that, we can regulate what is going on. Why? Because the church has a lot of values. You put in your money, they steal your money, someone hacks into your account. Why? Because the people that have the password, the people that have the portal of entries of these softwares are not what Christians. They don't have the value systems of integrity, they don't have the value systems of uh, uh, probity, they don't have the value systems of responsiveness. These are all charlatans. These are all roadside people, but they are just intelligent and we're the ones giving them this money. So the church has a strong role to play at this particular point in time. We need to navigate around the food sector, we need to navigate around the poly making sector we need to also navigate around the health sector while we do this we are going to be sure that the system will be in order I made an illustration the last time I said if you go to Winner Chapel or where uh, you go to Winner Chapel uh, Lagos the Kenan land for more than 21 years or so that place has received uninterrupted power supply whereas the federal government of Nigeria is struggling to power a particular system is something that we can actually copy from him and reproduce it everywhere we are and before you know it, it will become like Dubai. But you know, at the African man, the mentality, the concept, he said, this man was just involved in criticism. But I believe that this is going to be a video that will stir up the revolution inside of you. So I don't know who is going to come across this video, my beloved listener. As I round up in this broadcast, while we wait for the other five sessions I'm going to talk about on the role of the church as a catalyst for national transformation. But I want you to know one thing that when we talk about the church, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about myself. It's not just the building. The church is the building and also you. It's also the building and also you. It's also the building and also you. We also are, but we are the ones that actually make the building functional. It's important for you and I to begin to engage the system. You are doing a missionary work in this regard. We need to get into the development of our continent. And if you're a Nigerian of our nation, Nigeria, please, I'm not trying to be very sentimental about Nigeria, but I'm trying to make sure we create it as a, as a blueprint to make sure that all African nations, whether you're South African, the uh, East Africa, the North African, and the West African uh, 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 nations, we need to work in these regional platforms to see that Africa becomes a home. Africa becomes a place. Africa becomes a, 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 another Dubai, becomes another Europe, where all the all the Caucasians, the Canadians, all the Europeans, all the uh, uh, people from the United States, all the Asians, will all come back to Africa, and then they will come to this point where we begin to employ them, and we begin to give them jobs. And it's going to happen in my time. It's going to happen in your time. So, uh, my friends and my listeners, you need to Click on that like button and like this video and also click on the share button and share to your friends and look at uh, the website that is on the screen and uh, check out what we're doing here, whether you're a doctor, whether you're a musician, whether you're an entertainer, whether you don't need to speak in tongues to be part of our system. That I've actually made this video possible. The iGold Africa. iGold means Initiative for Good Governance leadership and uh, economic uh, development and uh, the Faith House Translation Assembly and uh, the Leeds Africa Business and Finance Development Company. I want you to know that you are part of the revolution that Africa is going to experience. Thank you. See you sometime in the next video. God bless you.